called Aikikaburo. This is a really, really popular area with a ton of restaurants and actually a lot of Chinese restaurants. And that's what I'm trying to find is this, is this Chinese place that serves some amazing monster dinosaur-like ribs. You know how much I love eating my dinosaurs. And I remember when I first moved to the US and I was watching the Flintstones, you know, when like the rack of dino ribs was placed on the side of Fred's car and it tipped it over. I remember at that moment, I thought, I like this guy. I like how he eats. It looks so amazing. This is it right here. This big monster mutton leg. This place you can get seafood. Oh, let's get some dishes too. Kosher tea. That looks good. Roasted milky mushrooms. Oh, that eggplant is awesome too. Sound side potatoes. Wow. This looks like my type of place. Soup dumplings? What? This is it. This is the monster mutton leg. Oh, there it is. Wow. This is it. Look at this. Oh my god. Giant massive piece of mutton leg with the grease dripping on the charcoal. You hear that little sizzle each time a piece of this grease drops onto the fire? This is just basically all fat. <laughs> and then just cut the little pieces off. And we're gonna grill it on the grill. I feel like I kinda just wanna start taking bites out of this while it's on the skewer. And when you're ready to eat, add some dry spices, add some of their homemade chili sauce on here. Dip it in here. Oh, I've got the dry spices, exactly what I want in my barbecue lamb. This reminds me of like lamb skewers I used to have in China. A little salt, sesame, chili, cumin. All you need to make this already delicious piece of fatty meat even better. Or you could dip it in there a little um, homemade chili sauce. Mm. Oh my God, just had a piece that was like 80% fat. Mm. This brings back good memories of street food in China. Oh, this is delicious. Cumin, a little sesame, a little chilies. That's one of the best ways to barbecue meat, especially lamb, because it really eliminates any gaminess that's left. And this already doesn't really have much gamey flavor because they marinated a whole slab of meat already. This is as barbarically fun and delicious as it looks. And you can just sit here and slowly do this. Slowly cut little pieces of meat off. and watch it sizzle and fall on the bottom grill. But honestly, it, it does get a little crazy because you're trying to concentrate on cutting the meat and then grilling it, and then you gotta worry that you're not burning this whole big slab, which is hard to do because this is so fatty. They can also um, take it back to the kitchen and cut it for you. All right, I'm sick of cutting this. I'm gonna just have them take, them, take it back to the kitchen and just slice it up and uh, put it on the grill because I gotta get to eating. Mm. I'm 
it depends on which kind of meat you're putting in your mouth. Some pieces are a little more lean. Some are like 90% fat, which I love. And some are just a perfect balance. You have a little chew, you got a little melt in your mouth action going. That was the kind of piece I was talking about. Great little char on the outside. And then just all multi fat. What I like to do is just dunk it into the dried chilies and salt and cumin. Just like the lamb barbecue of my youth. Perfect. You guys gotta come and try this. This is all the meat cut up. Now it becomes more of a <laughs> easier barbecue. With something like this, you gotta get some greens. Otherwise, after you eat this, you're probably gonna walk outside and just dive straight to the concrete. That's how fast and hard that food coma is gonna hit you. Mm. You eat the mutton, and also order something that the mutton would eat. It's almost like a tribute. This to this, to this. I love it when I get a little crunchy bit. And they already marinated the meat, so the meat on its own already it tastes really good. Mm. But nothing a little powdered chili couldn't make better. Ah, it's another good piece. Whatever things glisten. Whether it's a shiny car, sparkly dress, or a glistening piece of meat, you know it's gonna be good. All right, I feel like after about six or so bites, that's when my body craves a little veggie. Garlic, chopped up cucumbers. It's like a quick veggie shower for your mouth, then it's right back to the meat. Oh. I found a piece of treasure on this meat plate. Very under all the meat. It's something even better than regular meat. It's a piece of the leg bone, but the marrow still inside. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Ha 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 ha. Oh. Roasted marrow. Wow. I wish I had some little bits of toast or fresh steak or something to smear that on. Drizzle a little bit of spices on here. It's a little hot. Oh. Me by the bone. Most flavorful kind. This has been an amazing lunch experience, but right after this, <clears throat> and I mean right after this, we're going to lunch slash dinner number two, because I didn't have any food till like 2 p.m. today, and I'm on a rampage. Let's go. All right, before dinner, I'm gonna stop by White Day. This place makes some crazy looking apple pies. Now, personally, I believe when you have some apple pie, you need, need some ice cream. So luckily, there's a McDonald's right there. So let's a la mode. Well, 
Macamold this baby. This is a regular custard one, and this is a white custard. Got my <laughs> McFlurry. What? They don't really give you much, do they? Wow, McDonald's, come on. Wow, so this is the white custard apple pie. Huge chunks of apples. Flaky crust. Oh, that custard's on the bottom. Oh, that looks good. That is so good. So flaky and buttery. It's just like a complete contrast. Crispy skin and a creamy custard just melting around. A little crisp bites of apple. That was a hot, delicious mess. Oh, that was so much better. I was like the only way to make the apple pie better was to scoop some ice cream on top of that baby. I love it when I can bring food so much together. You know, apple pie, McDonald's soft serve. And I was wondering how my day could get better after that massive, delicious slab of meat I just barbecued, but this was it. Today, the blessing was in the shape of an apple pie in the McDonald's arch right next door. I mean, seriously, right there, right here. That's love. to in Japan, these little streets, always shops and restaurants, of course vending machines. This is the place I was trying to get to. I'm about to have some of the best sukiyaki in Tokyo and I'm at the Yocho Imahan. This is supposed to be absolutely ridiculously good. And this thing, it's especially, this just looks like, you see all the, all the waves? It's like literally looking down from an airplane and seeing ridges of mountains covered in patches of snow. Literally one of the most beautiful food items you'll ever lay your eyes upon. And I, I just want to ski down those patches of snow down that little beefy mountain with my tongue. Can I take a family photo of just me and this beef? I think it make a good couple. You know, like a little love photo. And sukiyaki, you gotta have an array of vegetables. Some greens, tofu, fresh spring onions, carrots. It's just a colorful medley that really is necessary in every sukiyaki meal. And of course, cannot forget the shiitake mushrooms. The best way to taste a really good wagyu beef is via sukiyaki. So basically what it does is the fat renders more in sukiyaki. So you get more of the beef flavor, so you're not just tasting the fat. And that's why the top quality meats are usually used for sukiyaki. So one reason why this place is so famous, they're cooking on a special cookware, they say, adds a special flavor and deliciousness to the sukiyaki. And sukiyaki sauce, it's just a sweet soy sauce. And each side of this beef is so thin, it's cooked for just a matter of seconds. <laughs> and it's dipped into a raw egg. Arigatouzaimasu. The reason this is dipped in raw egg yolk is a couple of reasons actually. One is that the sukiyaki, the meat comes out very, very hot. And so the raw egg cools the meat down a bit. And of course you can see all the great marbling of the beef. And the second thing the raw egg does, because it's cooked in the sweet sauce of the sukiyaki sauce, it does tone down the sweetness a lot. Oh, 
Oh, that's amazing. One of my favorite ways to indulge in A5 beef here in Japan. Just close your eyes and let it, all that marbly melt over your tongue and just great beefy flavors enhanced by this method of cooking. Shiitake mushroom just landed. That's one of my favorite ingredients. And with the sukiyaki, also getting a side of maguro. It's like spring has arrived on a ship. It's a colorful dish. And this dish is really eating the freshness of the ingredients. So all the veggies has to be just ridiculously fresh, especially the spring onions. Mm. This is really just, I mean, it's already glistening on its own, but then with a bit of the egg on the outside, I never get sick of how buttery that thing is. Even more so now after it's dipped in egg. Mm. Mm. I recommend eating it. A little hot tea. It's probably some of the most melt in your mouth, gentlest, fattiest surf and turf combo you could ever have. Fresh shiitake mushroom, and they made a fresh yolk dipped in sauce for me. Mm. Mm. That's my favorite after the beef. Oh, that shiitake mushroom is just, ugh. And what you can do right now, because they make you a new sukiyaki dip in egg sauce, dump the old ones on top where all the flavor is. And this is gonna be even better. God, the creaminess the egg adds to this dish. And my next order of beef has arrived. Also, what's really good about this is when you start putting more and more cooked ingredients into the raw egg, you start making tamago. Look. <laughs> oh, that's what's in this. <laughs> Meat serving number two. Do with this fresh tamago right here. Put it in your mouth. Mm. Ah, so creamy and smooth. This is true sukiyaki experience. Great way to enjoy the best quality meat, best quality vegetables. What's crazy about this is the finale. You know how like some Korean barbecues at the end, they make like some noodles or fried rice on the grill? But here, they make you an omelet from all the great little bits of flavor left on the sukiyaki grill. If you don't automatically fall deeply, madly, savagely in love with this egg, I really don't feel like we can be friends. All that great juice is soaked into the rice down below. Sweet, rich, full umami flavor. It's also got a great beefy essence. To say this is a ridiculously happy ending will be a complete understatement. When you're in Japan, you cannot miss a complete sukiyaki meal. This is one of the greatest food experiences, not just flavor-wise, just the whole experience. Today, so much satisfaction. Massive mutton shank, roasted over, burning charcoal fire. Then coming over here and, and tasting something that is completely finesse and so attention to 
detail and attention to the quality of the ingredients. It's like completely different meals with like a McDonald infused apple pie in the middle of it. And it's definitely 100% nap time after this. As always, of course, all the plays I went to, I'll list them below for you guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Till we eat again, see you later.